This video is going to be on computing permutations and combinations. Now, um, most of you have a locker at school. And on your locker, there's numbers from 0, and then there's a 10, and I think it goes all the way up to 60, if I'm not mistaken. Um, now, in your locker combination, there's a series of three numbers, right? Um, so your first number might be 17. Your second number might be uh, 41. And maybe your last number is uh, 5, right? So this is your locker combination. Now, this really should be called your locker permutation because the order with which you put in these numbers does matter. When I say that, I mean, if you put these three numbers in a different order, like let's say you did the five first and then the 17 and then the 41, this would not open your locker, right? If you did them in a different order, that wouldn't do the trick. So when you um, have a combination lock, it really should be called a permutation lock. If the order doesn't matter and you could write these three numbers in any way, then that would be a combination. So think of a combination as combining all the different ways that you could do something. And a permutation is where order does matter. It has to be a specific order of the numbers. OK? Now, if any of these would work, that would be a combination. But since only one works, that's a permutation. That's what the C and the P in these problems stand for. All right, so the C means you're doing a combination. So here's how we read this. Evaluate 10 choose 3 and 9 choose 4, meaning that there are a total of 10 options, like 10 numbers, and you're choosing three of those numbers. So how many different combinations could we make of three numbers out of those 10 numbers? And in this case, it's asking you how many different ways could we place four out of nine? So you have nine to choose from, and you want to place it so that there's four, but in this case, order does matter. All right, so let's go ahead and see how we solve problems like this. Let's start with a really simple example, okay? Let's say that there's three people, and you want to see how many different possible ways there are for them to finish a race, right? So this is first place, this is second place, and this is third place. So gold, silver, and bronze. Now, if there's three people, right? One, two, three. And they're racing. How many different people could finish in first place? Well, this person could, this person could, and this person also could, right? So there's three options of how many people could finish in first place. All right, so let's say that someone finishes in first. How many options are there for second place? Well, there's only two people left because someone finished first. I don't know who, but I know someone did. So now there's only two possibilities here. And that takes care of the second person, right? Now there's only one person left. I don't know who's left, but I know only one person is left. So that means that there's only going to be one option for who finishes last. I don't know who it is, but someone's got to be it and only one person's left. So the way that we can figure out how many different combinations there are is by multiplying these three numbers. 3 times 2 times 1. There's six possible ways that these three people could finish first, second, and third, right? This person could finish first, second, or third. This person would then have two options, and they would have one option. So here's a little um, backstory on how we calculate uh, permutations and combinations, okay? Now, because we don't want to write this whole thing out every time, mathematicians come up with shorthand, right? Uh, a symbol to represent this so that we don't have to do it over and over again and so that we can generalize it for a pattern. When you have more people, it's a lot harder to do, right? Um, so what we do is we came up with this symbol. However, this symbol, you've probably seen it before you might think that's an exclamation point. But in math, we call that a factorial. And what it means is what we just did. It means whatever number is before the factorial times every number after it decreasing, every integer after it in a decreasing fashion. So if you had 4 factorial, that would be equal to 4 times 3 
times two times one. What we just did was with three factorial, right? Which is three times two times one. So four factorial is equivalent to four times three is 12, times two is 24, times one is 24. That's equivalent to 24. So when you write four factorial, that equals 24. Three factorial, three times two times one, as we just saw, is equal to six. Two factorial is just two times one, right? So that's just two. One factorial, where well, there's no number after it, right? So that's just one. And here's the tricky thing is zero factorial. Now, if there's only one person in the race, then there's only one way they can finish, right? If there's only two people in the race, there's only two ways they can finish. Either one person gets first and the other gets second or vice versa. But when there's zero people in the way, race, there's not zero ways they can finish. When no one's racing, you know that no one's winning, right? So there is actually one way that that can work. So that explains why zero factorial is actually equal to one. All right, we're going to take this idea of the factorial and we're going to go ahead and apply it. Whenever you have a combination uh, and you have a permutation, it's a slightly different formula, okay? So we label this, the first number in each of these, this number is n in our formula for the total number of, uh, that we're choosing from. And then this number right here, we call r. All right, so this second number here is r. Now the formula for a permutation, let's do this one in blue, I like doing permutations first, is n factorial divided by the difference between n and r factorial, okay? And now for combinations, it's almost exactly the same n factorial divided by the difference between n and r factorial. But then you multiply that again by r factorial. All right, because when you have combinations, there's more different possibilities, right? Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to use these two formulas so it does matter whether there's a p or a c there, right? Okay, so let's do the permutation first because this is actually a slightly easier formula and then we'll do the combination. So for the permutation, oops, let's go back to blue. For the permutation, what's our n value? Our n value for the permutation is nine. So we're going to do nine factorial divided by, and then what's n minus r? Let's see, n is nine, r is four, so that would be nine minus four is five, right? So this is five factorial. So if we wrote this all out, this would be nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one divided by five factorial, five, times every integer decreasing after it. Okay, so when we're dividing, we like to see what eliminates or what cancels. Let's see, I have a one on top and a one on bottom, a two, a three on both. Oh look, all of these numbers up until five, right? So really what my answer is, is just what's left. Since it's on the top, I'm just multiplying this straight across. So my answer is nine, times eight, times seven, times six. Let's go ahead and do that on the calculator and see what we get. Nine times eight times seven times six. That means there's a total of 3,024 different ways that I could have nine possibilities and choose only four of them, where order does matter. Now let's go ahead and try the combination. So here we have 10, choose three. So our n value is 10. 
And let's think, what's n minus r? What's 10 minus 3? Well, that would be 7 factorial. And then our r is 3. So we multiply this again by 3 factorial. So let's go ahead and write this out. 10 factorial would be 10 times 9 times 8, so on and so forth, all the way down to 1. Now, usually when I do this, I actually don't like to write out the 1 because when you're multiplying by 1, you're really just saying that it stays the same, right? Anything times 1 is just itself. So I usually don't even bother writing the 1. Let's do 7 factorial now. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 and again times 1, but that would just make it the same. But look, now we also have this, the 3 factorial. So we can't forget to include the 3 factorial. We are just multiplying these. So I'm just going to keep it going and multiply now again times 3 factorial. 3 times 2. Again, times 1, but times 1 doesn't change anything. Okay, now I'm going to see what I can cancel out. Um, let's see. I'll use a different color for this. How about this orange? Okay, so 2's cancel. 3's cancel. Oh, look, and then the 4's, everything from 4 up until the 7 will cancel out. 5 and 5. 6 divided by 6 is 1, those cancel. 7 divided by 7, that's 1, those cancel. And now all I have left on bottom is 3 times 2, and on top I have 10 times 9 times 8. Now, if you'll notice, this is a fraction, right? So it's almost like um, you're dividing the top by the bottom. That's exactly what you're doing. So what is 9 divided by 3? Well, 9 thirds, you could reduce that to just 3, right? If I divide 9 by 3, that's 3. And I divide 3 by 3, that's 1. Similarly, if I divide 8 divided by 2, that's 4. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Notice that I've simplified this, so I don't even need a calculator anymore. So on bottom, I just have 1 times 1, or 1. So really, there's just a whole number now. 10 times 3 is 30, times 4 is 120. So what this tells me is that when I have uh, 10 possibilities, and I need to choose three of them, and those three can go in any order, that there's 120 different ways that I can do that. Let's check the explanation. Here we have 3,024 and 120. So that's how it's done. I hope this helps.